have a lot to cover today is a full content webinar. Uh, you're going to see an amazing opportunity that we have out there that, you know, not a lot of people are taking advantage. I mean, you do have big companies using this all the time, but the, the coaches, the consultants, the speakers, uh, many, many small businesses are not taking advantage of something that is almost free for you to get started. And it's huge because instead of being just one more expert out there, you really can become an icon in your industry. And, you know, that's what's really, really necessary. We live in a time today that people get scattered around the internet with so many social uh, networks out there. And we spend a lot of time marketing on those places. And many times we do not get the attention we deserve, right? We get a lot of visibility, but we do not get the attention. And in fact, uh, one of the reasons is because we are doing what everybody else is doing, right? We are going after the visibility, we leave tips. Well. It becomes just noise with time. People don't pay attention to you anymore because, sadly, you're just one more out there doing the same thing everybody else is doing. So even the concept of being an expert in your industry needs to be revealed today. Because what is an expert is another expert, right? Uh, it's a dime a dozen, actually. So you don't want to be in that environment. You want to create contrast. You know that the brain pays attention to contrast. So you need to create contrast from your uh, competition. And the smart TV shows are really a great way for you to do that because it's different. It's extremely effective. You're going to see that you're going to be able to reach three very different types of audiences with one effort, which is a great concept in marketing, you know, one effort to many results. Everything that you do in marketing, you should be thinking, okay, what can I do that will generate one effort, one amount of work, but then I can generate multiple results. And you're going to see that this is the case. So it's a great, great opportunity. And we have been doing this for about, um, correct me if I'm wrong, National, but the Smart TV show for about two years, if I'm not wrong. And, uh, you know, it, 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 we are there alone. We don't have all the competition we have in other places like Facebook, Google Plus, and all the rest, right? So which great, is fantastic. Great, which is fantastic, true. So before we dive into the content, for those of you that are not familiar with us, we are the Buzz Boosters, also known as the Buzz Ladies, a mother and daughter team that we, we have been working together since Nashla was a teenager in 1998. I, I don't know how old you were in 1998, Nashla, but not not. I'm old. not sure. I think I was 13, maybe? Yeah. 14? So, 14. 13. Something like that. Yeah, we started working online. Uh, we had some projects that didn't work, and then we started an online crafts magazine that is still going on today. So you, you do the math here, how many years we sell online courses and, and crafts uh, on that website. That website is in Brazil. And that's when we really uh, got a notion that this can work, you know, this online environment, this new uh, technology that they show up every day, they actually can make a huge difference because allows us as small businesses to compete with big businesses. So that's the beauty of that. Concerning the TV shows, we have two smart TV shows. Uh, one of them, I believe the Buzz Booster TV is about four years old and the other one is Peel the Beans is about two years, more or less. I'm not very good in keeping track of dates. Uh, when, when we had TubeMogul that used to rank the web shows, we were top 40 in the education category. Uh, TubeMogul changed their business format in part to adapt to this new thing that is going to be the smart TV shows uh, and so they don't have that anymore but we were one of the top 40 and we have only increased in viewership since then so we know we are pretty well actually the guy uh, after me was GoDaddy with their show so it, 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 it was very interesting now our show has been like I said more or less to 2008 about 20,000 viewers a month uh, those are the ones that download the the show in different in different formats. Okay. That, so in, 
go ahead. So in reality, the number is much higher because when you start in this number, we're not tracking uh, people who are watching on YouTube, on uh, Vidler, on Blip TV, and all those other places. It's simply the downloads. Exactly. And and not only our show, but we have several clients that are in different industries, uh, also having their own shows. We did open this program about a year, a year and a half ago. Uh, was the first time and only time so today is a unique chance as you can see and we have some clients and we are going to mention them later so you can go check their shows uh, doing extremely well as well before we go into smart uh, TV shows let's just look again on the online video arena I don't need to tell you uh, how how important videos are today, right? You heard that before. Uh, YouTube here, you have some numbers like 800 million people that have access to you. It's important to understand one thing. Uh, I understand that when we talk about videos, people think, oh, it's it's more difficult. I have to have a good hair day, whatever. Whatever is your excuse that you decide not to do videos because you think you're time is better spent on another social network YouTube is also a social network have one very important thing in mind YouTube is an open social network meaning that anybody on earth can find your videos there they don't need to be connected to you or to a friend of yours so when you think about Facebook that they have a billion users blah 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 you have to understand that you have access to your friends and to the friends of your friends in some situation and that's it plus you have to be paying if you want more visibility inside Facebook I, I don't know if you are aware of that but the pages for example you might have four or five thousand people that have uh, liked your page and when you post something maybe 20 will see unless you boost the post and you pay for that in the other social networks you also have the fact that they are closed social networks so you have access according to their rules LinkedIn the two degrees uh, of separation and things like that so it's very very constrained the amount of people you can really reach while on YouTube and on other video networks you 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 are on an open social network so anybody can find your videos so this is a, a crucial point here when making a decision and yes there is a little bit more work involved in producing a video but today it's so easy uh, and, and any device can do that even your cell phone and I bet you have one uh, right beside you right now that you can do that there, there is no uh, not anymore the problem of you don't understand the technology right Shahar I think what you just said is so important it bears repeating the part about the open network you know it, it's so true because many times we'll spend hours on focusing on Facebook and some other of some other networks like that and some of some other ones of those networks and the reality is just like you said people will have access to, it all depends on how many connections you have or how many people like your page and the percentage of those people who will see it when when you think about YouTube as long as it's up and it's public anyone in the entire world can see it so it's not dependent on how many connections you have that in itself is a major thing yeah and we have also to consider that a lot of us are visual people we enjoy visual and you know the reptilian brain the brain that really the part of the brain that really makes decisions the buying decisions based on emotions uh, responds to visual a lot better than to any other type of, of uh, communication so if you really want to increase a business you have to become very visual you you saw what Pinterest did in, in a few months how popular that is and it's basically because it's visual you can put pictures and you can put videos there so we respond really well to visual that's that again is another reason why it's important to have videos and you have numbers here 4 billion plus videos viewed every day 1 trillion views in 2011 that was the statistic I found I didn't find one for for right now but just think even two to three years ago that's hundred and forty views for each person on earth YouTube is, is supposed to pass Google at any point because it, it became the place for you to research. So you're looking to know 
any type of how to you go to to google is a huge search engine again very important in itself it is a search engine people do go there to research different topics different solutions be a, a coaching or be urinary problems they go there to try to find those solutions and of course you heard that before your videos on youtube they can show on google as well so you're just blanketing the the internet in a moment that people are looking for a solution to a problem right and when they are not sure exactly what they want they go to youtube to research okay so three billion plus hours of video watched every month it is vital that your company has a youtube channel creates a youtube channel even if you don't adopt the the smart tv which would be not very wise decision but even though you might decide no i, I will just stay online then do the YouTube channel and post videos that are both informational and uh, entertaining, as entertaining as you can make. There, are, You don't have to be funny in order to get traction. Even the system inside YouTube that tracks what a, a, a viral video is differs from music and funny to business. So don't worry about getting millions of views because in some cases you're just not going to get that. But YouTube, for example, in business, two or three thousand is already what they decide as viral so they may decide to feature your your video and hopefully your show now with that that's, said that, go, go ahead that, that's a very good point because that's one of the things like uh, we get a lot it's like well I'm, if I unless I'm posting a cat video or something like that am I going to get the traction that I need or I'm, am I going to get the thousands of views well YouTube understands that they understand that a business video won't have as many will likely not have as many views as a cat video and so they put that they factor that in into their into their equation when they're trying to decide if they if they'll make if they'll feature a video and make it go viral and so forth mm -hmm. keep in mind that you can be interesting and uh, entertaining without having to be funny necessarily without having to, to do things that are outside your nature as long as your personality seeps through as long long as as long as as long as your content uh, is engaging enough you you can still be have good content be and be somewhat entertaining to your crowd yes and since we are on YouTube at this moment let's remember that it, just a few months ago YouTube went a major um, overhaul inside inside their own site because they wanted they, they understand, of course, the multi-screen environment that people watch videos not only sitting in front of a computer. So they did, they revamped the site so your videos would be showing on any type of device, but it is paying uh, a lot of attention to web shows, to shows. Why? Because YouTube is also on smart TVs. If you buy a TV today, it will come with a YouTube channel on it. So they understand this. They understand this is the new TV. and and they did this major thing to you know ad, uh, accommodate the the channels for for tv it's a quiet revolution you don't hear this on the media every single day but it's happening the big big companies and youtube they understand this environment okay now we told you about smart tvs or connected tvs there are different ways of of approaching uh, it's so new that people people try to explain this with different words so either you say connected TV or smart TVs the fact is that uh, any new TV that you buy uh, is connected right and it comes with a certain amount of channels okay some of them come with a very large suite of channels others uh, with a small suite of channels I think the one we we have downstairs naturally came with uh, I don't know four or five of those channels but then you can hook devices we are going to talk more about it and then you have hundreds of channels but what's interesting is that many times people have connected TVs and they almost don't even know because it's it's just part of their TV and they've always accepted it as that and they don't realize that they have a connected TV so uh, pretty much any TV that you buy nowadays is connected TV is a smart TV like Shahar said they have several different names I guess uh, they haven't decided on an industry yes standard for that name so connected TV smart TV is essentially the same thing um, but as long as you have sometimes many times they come with like Netflix Hulu and those other channels um, and that's kind of one of the ways that you know that you have a connected TV 
gas. And here's some statistics for you. In 2014, 57 million U.S. Broadband, broadband households will be viewing full-length online video on TV. That's not only the YouTube thing. We are going to talk more about that. But you see the potential as a market. Um, it's your unique opportunity to be online and on traditional TV at the same time. Let me tell you one thing. We attend some very specific uh, industry conferences like streaming media where we, we have you know big players like Comcast and DirecTV and all the others, which thinks, well, which are trying to adapt to this new TV because if they don't, they would lose uh, their customer base. And one fact that has been seen last year is that a lot of people are already uh, watching all their normal channels through a smart TV without even knowing uh, they are not on their, you know, the, how do you say that, the traditional channel they, sh they should be in. So ultimately they're watching smart TV already, they're already watching the, the connected channels without even being aware of that. They think it's just their TV or one of their regular channels. Yes. So. It's very interesting in that respect because you can watch that you they have access to anything ultimately mm -hmm. and you know it's like Shahar said um, it's people they they'll watch full length online videos on TV so that notion that only the short uh, chat videos or the irrelevant the two minutes, boring, yeah. the two minute type videos that notion it's pretty much gone it's full length content full content yes. um, that is being watched on TV on real TV yeah which which, TV. which is important for you as a side note to take note of that because the, uh, that's one question we get uh, all the time how long should my videos be well so I, I'm going to make a parenthesis here because I don't want to forget this you have to understand you're going to be reaching different audiences in different moments, okay? And we're going to talk a little bit more later about this. But you have to understand it's not only the YouTube model of two to five minute videos. Because if I'm sitting on a couch watching your show every week, I am i don't want to keep clicking my remote every two minutes to watch another one. So you will have to find, in your case, uh, what works better. We have seen with us and our clients that 15 to 20 minutes is ideal. Yes, you do lose some audience on YouTube, but that's okay because sometimes your your ideal client is watching on TV like the couch potato. So that, that format works really well. And another thing I don't want to forget uh, is that how often should you do your show? Okay, uh, we have seen and now we have data to, to track this because before it was just our show, but now we have other people uh, that if you do a weekly show, your audience will increase over time. If you do less than that, like every two weeks or once a month, it loses traction. Okay, that's an important component for you to have in mind. So, of course, the more often you have your show out, the better. Uh, one week is ideal because, like we said at the beginning, uh, video does take a little bit more work, so it might be difficult for you to do every day. But once a week is fantastic, it grows over time. Less than that is a problem. So write those things down, and we can answer your questions later. One last and, thing. And, you know, we're, we're on this tangent, so I, I will continue. But... Um, you know what Shahar mentioned the the how how often should you release it? Well, keep in mind that this is a new way. It's in the new TV, right? It's the TV of the future. It's already here, but ultimately, it's the TV. It's it's the new TV. And so, um, our habits, however, are still of at this point are still of the the traditional TV. And so, one of the reasons why we say you know if you do one every week, that would be ideal because we're still in that mode where a new episode gets released every week so you kind of know your audience kind of knows to come back the following week to find your next uh, episode your next deal and so um, the when you when you space it out a little bit more then it becomes confusing for them to track okay when does it come out and that type of thing and so keep that in mind TV of the future but at this point the habit of uh, traditional TV still yes exactly and, and let me tell you about the OTT revolution that's why we are here today so OTT and actually uh, naturally you, you mentioned TV of the future that's another name they give to this there's even a conference called TV of the future that is around right. the connected TV smart TV so you choose the name you want to use uh, I so, don't mind <laughs> What is OTT? Because it's another name yes. we're going to throw into the mix. So it's the over-the-top 
revolution over the top boxes here's the deal you have your tv uh you have you and you buy a box there are many out there okay there there is one called roku the samsung blu-ray player you have you have really a suite of them some of them are just like a thumb drive like the roku roku is our favorite for for many reasons uh and you just plug on your tv that small thumb drive when you do that well you have hundreds of channels to choose from now let's breathe deep here and think about so this. while you're breathing yeah. while you're breathing and thinking about that um, let me quickly explain so why is it called over the top boxes because these are additional boxes that you put over top uh, sometimes your TV or your DVD player or whatever it is and like Shahar mentioned there are several pretty much dozens of them out there in the market uh, but ultimately they all perform the same thing yes uh, and, and they used to be boxes, but now you can even buy a thumb drive that, that does the same thing, so you don't even need to look at a, a box. The Apple TV, for example, is a, a over-the-top box. Well, let's think about Roku. I'm going to mention Roku several times because it is the most popular one. Has, uh, well, last time we checked, had 700 channels and more coming every day. These are public channels, so everybody has access to them. Okay, Roku Box, if you go to any Best Buy, you can buy one for 40 bucks. So you see there is not a huge investment. Once you go to those channels, so for example, some channels that you have there, you have Hulu, you have Amazon, you have Dish Network, the, the international channels, uh, you have many banks, like here in Utah, we have Zion's Bank, for example. You have many churches. Uh, a lot of Christian churches are there. And you have a, a suite. Well, you have 700 channels, all kinds of stuff. Why is that so cool? Well, Roku, just last Christmas, sold over 5 million boxes just in the U.S. So it's growing by leaps and bounds. Not only that, a show that is on Roku is available in the U.S., is available in Europe, and it's available in Asia okay so think about the reach of an audience so this is why uh, they, it's said TV of the future because it's a new type of TV that we are not used to right we, we TV uh, is a much more regional the traditional one so just think about the how many people you can reach with once with one show Okay, fantastic. So, so Roku is the one we we use. Uh, well, we use several. You're going to see that, but it's the one we have a channel on, because once you it, you have the the public channel there with your shows, you're open to the world. So, I think that's fantastic. Let's talk about the differences, okay? Because I know when we talk about web shows, people start, or sorry, smart TV shows, people start thinking it's complicated, it has a lot of equipment, it's very expensive. No, it's not. No, it's not. Those channels, they are, they are becoming so huge for several reasons. One of them is because most of them are, are topic specific. So, for example, uh, if you like health, there are channels and shows only related to health there which is very aligned to the way consumers consume information today. When I was younger, uh, it was normal for us to to look for magazines online that would talk a little bit about everything online or on TV. And even buying a newspaper, you would have a little tidbit of everything. That was the way I grew up consuming information. But today, uh, that's not how people do it. They go and they look for the topics that they are interested in. Okay, and these channels are specific, so that's another great thing here, because if you, you have a show about the topic, you know, people that like that topic will, will watch that. It doesn't, it's not targeting the mass media like traditional TV, okay? And another thing is, people today want, want to be connected not only online, but on TV. They want real people, real experiences, uh, real faces. So your show does not have to follow the traditional TV model where you need the whole studio and tons of equipment and a whole team. That's not what they're looking for. Okay. Uh, so, so why can you become the icon in your industry? For these reasons, because it's going to be very specific, very targeted. Only people that are interested in what you have to say will be watching on TV 
and you can reach a large, large audience on a moment that they are paying attention to you because let's face something, you're watching this uh, webinar and I hope you are watching, you were looking at the slides and everything, but chances are you are also doing three or four other things, you're multitasking. And, and for us as business owners, when our consumers are doing that, it's not a good thing because the attention is scattered and, you know, that's a very precious asset. But when I'm sitting on my TV, on my couch, watching TV, guess what? I'm paying attention to that. I might be with a second screen like the, the phone, but if you are smart, you can make a connection that they use that all the time as well because, you know, the industry understands that now people are usually watching two screens at the same time. You have shows online uh, on TV, for example, Breaking Bad or, or Walking Dead, that they take advantage of this knowledge and use it very well. Because while you are watching, you have to text the message or, or do something with your cell phone. Or then, tweet. Or tweet. In in fact, if you if you even pay attention to what they say when they approach when they're they the, the the first commercial comes on, they actually even call it the second screen. Yes. And so that is an industry term, and they they're fully aware of this. And sometimes three or four screens are involved. But ultimately, so what can they do as a show to engage? Your, their audience, not only on TV like they're doing, but then, hey, if someone's going to be distracted looking at some something else, might as well be looking at us as well. Yes. And so start paying attention to that. It's actually very interesting. Yes. And you're going to see that the shows that really uh, hit the chord with people, they go for, for emotion, for content, and not for production. So please uh, shift the paradigm that to have a, a TV show, it needs to have all that production, all that structure, because it does not. So take that out of your mind and understand that behavior has changed. The, what people expect to see on a show is different than before, as well as the way they watch. Okay? Why would be this a great thing for you? Well, I mentioned some of them, not a crowded space. So you're, in, for example, if you're a coach, you're not another coach like you are on Facebook with thousands of them. Okay, you're, you're in a very good environment at this moment. Of course, if you wait until this is very, very popular and it's all around the media, it's going to be too late. But if you take action fast, you will still have a good time ahead of you where you can dominate the, your industry and really become an icon. Uh, you reach very different audiences. So let me explain what that is. The difference between a show and a normal video is the, it, it's because it's constant and you call it a show, okay? There are no technical things related to that. It's just that if you say it's every Tuesday, it's every Tuesday, and you have a new show going out. Okay? So you call it a show, you, you do it consistently, and to make it even better, to that top-notch thing, you add a little intro and a little outro that makes it look like a show. Yes, and there are fantastic people out there that make fantastic intros and outros for you. So that's, that's it. Right? That's it. So you can even repurpose videos that you already have and turn those into a show. Now, why do I say different audiences? Because that show is going to be in multi-platforms. How? Well, first of all, it's as a web show on YouTube. Okay? It's there, online. Anybody can watch. It's going to be a video podcast on iTunes. Okay, so a different type of audience. It's very different, actually. On iTunes, uh, statistics shows that you have a more male audience um, um, with college degrees making over 100K a year. That's the statistics according to Apple. So you have a different type of audience. And then you are on regular TV reaching the couch potato, a different type of audience. So think one effort to multiple results. This is really the one because you do the show once, your 15 minutes, you put online and, you know, you put on these other places and you're reaching different audience. 100% uh, recession proof because it works. It's fast to start and it's easy to start. Okay, like I said, no big productions. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of syndicating everything. You can be so, like I, well, I just said this, right? Online, iTunes, on the smart TVs and, of course, on mobile devices, all the other screens as well. Uh, you don't have to have any special education or technical knowledge because you can use 
what you have. It's highly profitable. I'm going to show you the different ways you can monetize with, with a smart TV show. Uh, like I told you many times before, this is the time because it's competition free. Um, we have, and you can check, besides our own shows, uh, we have a national, do you mind saying the name of the shows? Lisa Peck has a show. Lisa Peck has a show. It's called BizOnYourTerms.tv. BizOnYourTerms.tv. Uh, Debbie has a show, BoomerInSeniorTravel.com. Um, then we have uh, Chef. Hang Do you want to talk about Chef Hangout? Uh, I, I will. Um, we have Chef Hangout is actually a combination. That is just a clever way of doing because they they start giving classes online using Google Hangouts and then they turn those into shows. So, you know, you, ha you have several and I'll be happy to give you a list later uh, of different shows that you, you can, you have on Smart TV as well. The, I put the example of Chef Hangout here just because it's clever. You go to Google Plus, you start the Hangout, the Hangout goes to iTunes, then you syndicate to the to the over-the-top boxes and it's done so you see you don't need lights or team or cameras you can do any way you want and it can it's work. it's really it's really just to show you that as long as you're willing if you have the content and you're willing you can do it, it essentially it, I can't stress this enough you don't need a studio you don't need a super produced thing you don't need a green screen and a super expensive editor and studio and lights and cameras and all of that fancy stuff if you have it it's great yes but if you don't you don't necessarily need it you can do it either either you can do it over the phone uh, I mean over the computer like Shahar mentioned with Google Hangouts you can do it with a tiny little flip camera if you still have one of those or even just using your iPhone yeah as long as you have the content to share and a camera that you can stand in front of or uh, or like the computer you're good to go yeah yeah actually we we have a client that has a new show uh, Paula National Paula de Andrea I don't know in which episode she is, but, you know, she has an interview format, so she interviews people, it's very low-key, right, and she's having a great traction on the on the smart TVs, I mean, it's a very young show, and it's, it's going faster than some others we, we had in the past, so fantastic, yes. it's working well, and it's, it's low-key, there is no production, I don't, I don't really know uh, what she's using, but it's a camera, her and somebody else that she's interviewing. And it's and Rock Your Life I, I TV. don't remember. Yeah, it's rockyourlife.tv. It's, that's another example. I don't remember exactly what equipment she uses, but I think it's one of those flip cameras. Yeah, really. see, it's, yeah. And it's getting, you know, we, we do compare uh, here with the shows that we have and, and our, our clients and hers being so young as it is, is getting a lot of traction. Of course, a, a part of that, it, it, it has to do with the fact that now you have a lot more people using the boxes anyway, but her show is getting traction. It's motivational, it's something that really relates to people. Let's compare a little bit the traditional TV with this one. So in, on traditional TV, the main thing is limited region where shows can be seen, right? You have local cables, you, you are limited in the US, you don't, you're not seeing it everywhere. Uh, it's limited to one type of screen. Most shows, so there, there's exceptions today, right? Because you can use Hulu, but you usually watch on TV. You don't watch online. Unless you have a subscription paid in Hulu, then you can watch. Uh, the content has to remain broad and general. This is an important thing. In traditional TV, I need to really try to please everybody. So I only uh, put things that would please a large audience, okay? which today it's not aligned with behavior, and we have to take that into consideration. It targets a mass audience. It's not interactive, right? It is changing. It's slowly changing, uh, but usually communication is one way. I say you listen or you watch, right? Shows are broadcast on a fixed schedule. For, for us, for example, uh, it, it's, a different, it's a difficult thing because I'm not available at the time that the show uh, is on. I, we make an exception for Breaking Bad now, but you know we are usually doing something else or traveling or whatever. Uh, yes, you can have cable with the, whatever is the name that the thing that you record that, but it, it's very limited as well. Uh, commercials bombard viewers every few minutes. Commercials that are not relevant to them. So again, it's something that you just fast forward or you change the channel, which is even worse for whoever is producing the show. Now let's see the other one, the, the, the Smart TV. Smart TV. 
content can be designed for niches and sub niches. This is fantastic, okay? Because it's your topic to that ideal audience. You don't have to please everybody. And the more topic specific you are, the more traction you're going to get. Okay. Unless you're just teaching people how to train their parrot, which might be a very small audience, but we have seen with ebooks that that's not that small. Uh, but it it's going to be relevant. People that are going to watch want to be consuming your content. Okay, it's going to target your ideal client because, of course, you're going to do the show around that ideal client. I, I explained to you already the three different audience. Uh, the TV. Like I told you, it's multi-screen anyway because it's online. It's is a podcast and it's a TV show, so I can watch in different in different screens, which is aligned with the uh, current behavior. Uh, it's easy, it's fun. You can provide interactions. Uh, you can, you know, if you do as a hangout, for example, you can have a lot of guests and people chiming in, and you're recording that, and it becomes a show, and then you syndicate to TV. So you have different ways to make it very engaging. Um, it's on demand access. They watch when they want, which is fantastic. So if it's three in the morning, it's three in the morning. Uh, a few commercials. I didn't leave commercials here because it's a cool way of you monetizing. And we are going to talk ab about that next. But the cool part is these commercials are aligned with the audience that you have. So they don't, they don't will, they will not interrupt per se. They will provide uh, a benefit to your audience. So it's a, it's a different approach. You don't have geographic boundaries. Like I said, it's already on the US, Europe, and Asia, and we hope it will open Latin America soon. Soon, But you're reaching a huge market if you want to, right? Any industry can have a smart TV show because it's topic specific. So if you're an accountant and you want to do a show for people look, looking for accounting or you're teaching accountants, uh, great, because they're going to be able to find your show there and watch. Okay, it allows several streams of income. I believe we have listed 15. There are more. I'm going to, to talk about that next. You don't have to have super high fees to have your show. You're going to see that that's affordable to anybody. And you're reaching the couch potato. It's, it's worth uh, mentioning here. That's the same person that buys from infomercials. And you know that if you want to put an information out there, you're spending $100,000 at least to have that there. Uh, those people buy it, and that's a reason why those those infomercials are so expensive. It works. You're reaching the same audience. Here are the revenue models. Like I said, some of them. Uh, sponsorship is, you know, um, let's say it's an easy one. Uh, you can say a thousand to four thousand per episode. It does relate a little bit to the numbers that you have. Nobody in this environment is looking for millions of views because that doesn't happen with Smart TV at this point. But for you to have an idea on how important that is, there are several companies, I mentioned to Mogo before, that have either changed their business model or just have popped up in the last two years that all they do is go look for ads for your show, okay, and so sponsors. Shahar, really quickly, what exactly is a sponsor? Like, what would you do if you had a sponsor? Well, again, there are many choices uh, here. I could just mention. I was I was telling you this morning, Ash. I watch a show called, called Toy Break for people that like toy art, which I do, and they have several sponsors. I don't know how much they make on that. Okay, I didn't look for for that. But what they do is at the beginning of the show they mention who the sponsors are. You can go fancier. Uh, like like we national we put we besides uh, having a segment on the show where we talk about whatever they are selling we we'll go to webinar used to be one of our sponsors for example so we would uh, give their code for a discount and things like that we would talk a different thing every week for them we also had the banners uh, on our site you you can do a multitude of things so ultimately essentially we need to understand is you can make it as simple or as complicated as you want essentially a sponsorship could be something as simple as this show is sponsored by buzz booster or it could be something a little bit more like a segment where you actually talk about them for for a minute or less or um it could be something where you play their the commercial that they provided to you yes so it's it's very flexible what you can do when you have a sponsor so on a show that is about 15 to 20 minutes you usually would have two sponsors 
you don't want to overload because then it would be interrupting the show all the time. But you see, you, so that alone could mean a, about $8,000 a month for you once you have them. And, and you know, if things are done right, they see the results and they keep for you for a long time, which is also recurring income for you. You can have ads on the show blog. So on the show in itself, you might just put as credits at the end, but then you have a banner on, on your blog. That's another possibility here. We, on average, 500. And, and I'm basing on what we can do with our show uh, and with the show of our clients. Of course, there are exceptions that make a lot more. I'm saying uh, on the things that I know, that I have experienced. Uh, product placement. So you can f showcase a product, a specific product, and talk about it on your show. Um, if you don't talk too much about it, $500 per, per time. Uh, you can have a feature guest. This is very common in radio, where you sell th that show to a person. And 2000 is average, even for radio. And you know radio is very local. This is not. Uh, you can have them there, or you can even uh, do a recommendation of a product and show and, and do a whole segment on that. That would also be around $2,000. Uh, sell your show as a package season. Uh, there are some people, we haven't done that with ours, but I, I have some friends that did. Uh, so after you have a whole season, you package that as a CD set, for example, and you can you can sell. 97 is what my friend uh, usually sells him. He has, uh, he's been for several seasons already, so it gives you an idea. Of course, it leads to consulting. That's one of the best things. Uh, there is no question here. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll tell you a story. I interviewed somebody some months ago, Therese Barbie, one of my favorite life coaches out there. And we did an interview using Google Hangouts. So very simple one. She's in Minnesota. I'm here in Utah. So I interviewed her, syndicated that, and forgot about it, right? She called me the other day uh, saying about a huge uh, new client she had that watched the show on TV, pick up the phone, contact her and close with her. So I, I think that's fantastic. With us has happened several times because again, they see you as the icon, you're there alone, you're not competing with everybody else. It just makes a perfect environment if you're selling any type of consulting, training. It's ultimately, speaking. you know, it's it's your space. Yeah. They're there, they're watching you, you you are the focus. Uh, it's 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 not as cluttered the environment. I mean, we've said it several times today already. It uh, makes for a perf the perfect storm, as they say. Yeah, exactly. Uh, speaking of engagement, same thing. They they see and you know, thirty five hundred is very low for for a speaking engagement. Um, it, it all depends on how seasoned you are in the market. For, like I said, this is a starting uh, baseline: five thousand, ten thousand. It all depends if you're if you're there for a long time or not. that That's what's going to count. It's not related to the show. You can transcribe your shows into products. Okay, so you can make ebooks and books. Uh, you can transcribe into online courses. You can have online courses as well. They're paid. Okay, we are not going to go into the paid part uh, a lot because, because that's not the focus today. But you can have a show that people pay to watch. Why I don't have it here today? Because you first need to be known in that environment, as in anything else. So it, it, it doesn't make sense for you to, to have a paid show if nobody knows who you are on, on smart TVs. Okay, but once you do, or once you have something that is very specific and would work online, um, so I don't know why I keep saying online, uh, on TV, you can have a paid online oh, a paid course or, or even pay, I don't know the word online just keep popping up but you can have a paid show you can have a paid course you, you can have other other options here where you're getting pay-per-view pay it, it you have different options sometimes maybe a variety you, of things that you can do yeah we, we may go into that some other time but it's a possibility but if you don't want to do that you want to sell online then you just transcribe those shows affiliate sales of course you can even with people that you interview you can sell live events yours and some other, and other people where you are a joint venture uh, you can share product sales with interviewees if um, if they're launching something easy uh, send viewers to a membership site or to a membership program again that that's not difficult at all 
right? Because you're there for 15, 20 minutes and then you transition them to a low price point membership program that you can upsell later. It's easy, it has been done uh, with podcasts for a very long time. It's, it's not difficult. Uh, once you have numbers to, to justify, as in anything else, you're, you're dealing with percentages. The good thing here is the percentage is higher than, for example, sending an email today. I don't know if you know that, but uh, it's about 1% return that you're having with emails and now with the Gmail changes might be even lower. And of course, you can sell your own products there. So ultimately, I mean, you, you, it's a, a, there are a variety of ways that you can monetize your show from, from, from straight on, okay, let's sell an ad on the blog or a sponsorship to, to other more indirect ways or, or ways where you can repurpose the content. So ultimately, you know, Shahar always likes to say one effort, multiple results. And that's precisely what this is because uh, it, you're using it to brand yourself, to, to give yourself a platform to become known and to attract viewers you're also using it to create content which then you'll later repurpose and sell as maybe a product uh, a coaching program an online training program or whatever it is so one effort multiple results this is the perfect thing um, if, f from in, in that case, in the scenario, because it allows you to do so much with it. It's not that you're just doing this and it's only good for this. It's good for so many other things. And really, we just listed 15 of them. There are many others, like uh, Shahar mentioned, that haven't been listed here or that even you might come up with, with an idea later on that you can use it as well. Yes, because it's your show. You can do whatever you want. And, and you know, thinking again, multiple results with one effort, you, you may have already a ton of videos that you could turn into a, a TV show. You may have a, a, a radio show that you can add some pictures. And ha I, I, I know some people that did that, uh, or they, that do that actually, because they, they combine those pictures with whatever they have in audio and turn that into a show. The important part here is that you have to be consistent. The key point to success it's not the technology, it's not production, it's to keep doing it. You have to do for for a long time. You have to, to jump on board and say, I'll be doing this for the next five years at least, right? Because in order to get people, to get the traction, and to be known as the icon in your industry needs consistency. So it's not the kind well, of stuff that be... you try once and stop. Right, you have to be committed. I mean, it's business, right? It's just starting a business and turning around the next day, letting someone know that it exists, and then kind of giving up because you didn't get any sales. Well, it, you, it's not successful that way, right? Uh -huh. It's the same thing here. It's a tool that you're using to 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 grow your business. Well, you have to to put a little bit of effort into it, and you have to be consistent in order to see results. Otherwise, it's just one more thing that you tried that didn't work. Yeah, uh, you know. I, I, I mentioned before that the GoToWebinar was one of our sponsors. We have had several in in the technology field over over time. But I told you before, we started doing web shows maybe four years ago, and we didn't have smart TVs at that time. And you know, for a long time, in that case, we didn't get anything. Today, the scenario is very different because today you have companies that will go look for sponsors. You, you, you still have to contact them and you, you have to have some traction. It's not in the second episode that you go after those companies, but they are there. Uh, the environment is changing. They know this is the new TV. So you're, we are going to have a lot more of those companies very soon. Uh, in our case, because we have a channel, we also have the possibility of bundling the shows and go after one sponsor for everybody. So there are many possibilities. So at the beginning that it, it's mind boggling. Now, before I tell you how we can partner on this journey, I want to make sure, and if you have questions, this is a perfect time for you to start typing them. I want to answer, I know there are many questions out there and, and maybe we didn't think to put in slides, but the important piece here is you have this choice of having a, a show. You don't need us to start your own web show and have on YouTube. So even if you decide not to partner with us today, you start your show and put on YouTube, okay? Because YouTube is also on smart TVs. Of course, it's up to them to choose which shows show on their channel. Uh, you have no say there and there are many variables in that environment to, to be there, but you have to have it. Uh, like I said 
people pay attention to visual, uh, you're in, in a less crowded environment in that scenario, so start doing that. But then you have the other options of be turning that into a podcast and then on smart TV. What do you need? You need a show that you do consistently, okay? Let's go and check how we could partner and then I'll answer your questions. Nash? <laughs> that was my cue. That's, that's your cue. There you go. So, of course, I'm offering here to you to have your own show. We are going to guide you during the process and syndicate for you. The syndication to Smart TV, you need somebody not only that understands the process, but uh, as in our case, we have a channel. Uh, that is not overloaded with th thousands of shows, which gives you a lot of traction. That channel in itself has a lot of traction. So it, it speeds up the, the process for you. We are going to talk privately about the structure of your show if you don't have it already and how it should be, and we can brainstorm names and sections. Um, we are going to see how much effort you want to, to have in, to produce in that show. If you don't want to deal with technology whatsoever, you just, you know, sit in front of the computer, tape yourself, and, and send to us, and we'll syndicate. That's one option. But if you can go, you know, another step and do segments in that show, which allows you to have more advertising in that show, then it's even better. So we are going privately privately discuss what's the best approach for you. We have different scenarios with clients. Uh, there are clients that they want you know, to do everything themselves, so they do something a little simpler. Others, you know, are welcoming other people with them to, to speed up the process. It's up to you. So we have that private session where we, we decide where we are going. Uh, of course, we take care of the syndication in the boxes. So Roku inside our channel, on Apple TV, on Samsung Blu-ray player, iTunes, of course, YouTube, of course. So there is a multitude, multitude of boxes that we are in. So they are going to be wherever people want to watch them. Uh, we have an app that is available also that you can uh, people can download and watch the shows right there. So you're going to be included in that app. Again, multiple screens, multiple platforms all the time. Uh, you will be trained uh, for you to, you know, all those questions that will pop up. How do I do this? How do I do that? Uh, what's the best approach to get sponsors fast? What's the best format for to, for, to have advertising? All that is online and you can go and, you know, it's a lifetime access, so every time we do a, an update, you get. So you're, you're, you're not alone in this process. It's not like something you're buying a syndication for a channel and come on, send me your show. We're going to get that together. Uh, like I said, we syndicate everywhere and we also syndicate on our own channel that is called Buzz and Biz, okay? When you join us, I'm going to give you some bonuses here. One of them is the blog. You need a specific blog for this type of show to be syndicated to the smart TVs as well. So this, you, you don't use the same one you use for text here. We create that for you. Of course, you're going to decide the look and feel. We create that. Uh, we create your show badges. The show badges are small badges that show on TV uh, so people can, can go and choose. Uh, they're very cute they show there. We have one that, um, how do you call it, the section that you put the new shows, Nash? The latest episodes, you mean? Mm -hmm. The latest yep. episodes, yes. So it also shows there. And we will create the intro and the outro. The, the intro and the outro, they last a few seconds. They are animated. They have your picture. They have the phrases that you decide to have. We give you three options to choose from. And then we add your logo, your picture. They're very cool. If you want to do something more sophisticated than what we do, then we can uh, guide you to people that do that. But, but, but ours are pretty cool. Ultimately, with uh, the show intro and the outro and the show badges and, and the blogs, essentially it makes your show look like a show because you have a pretty top-notch intro and outro, so it's not just you, just the talking head starting, you have the little introduction that, that 
that shows people that you're a show. And even the show badges, you know, they, they show inside our channel, inside Roku, uh, but they also show uh, in a variety of other places like on Apple TV, on iTunes, and things like that. On so our channel it's kind of, it, website as well, where we. Yep, it basically brands your show as a show, makes it look top notch. Exactly. Uh, and actually, tell, tell us how it works every week for people that have their show. Uh, you mean they send you, um, how they to... send you the file? Yeah, it's actually quite simple. Ultimately, all that you have to do, and I said this before, you can make it as simple or as complicated as you want it, but ultimately all that you have to do is record that episode and send it to us. Right, and then we can uh, we'll get it and we'll put the the show. We'll take care of releasing it, of distributing it, of uh, syndicating it ultimately. So putting that intro in the outro and and doing it. So we have several people do it different ways, but some people just put their the show in Dropbox and send it to us. Other people just upload it to their YouTube account privately, and then we download it and go from there. So however, whatever floats your boat, however way you find it the easiest to do. That's how we'll work with you. Yes. So we'll make sure the show is in a multitude of platforms and on, and syndicated on TV every single week. We say every single week because, like I told you, you can do less than that. We have people doing, but then it takes longer for you to get traction. Okay. We, you don't have. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to do it every week. Ultimately, the, the decision is yours. But what we've noticed is that shows that do it weekly uh, get more traction. So it's faster. They get there faster. Yeah. It, it's a funny thing, and it happens with podcasts as well. But the more consistent you are, the further you go. I I, I know people in in podcasting, for example, that even if their show would fall on a Christmas, and in their case, they. They are recording. They don't miss a beat. You know, they do from the hospital if they have to. Uh, we we are more, you know, easygoing. In that we're in a little that, more low key. Yeah, we are low key. But the the more consistent you are, the best for you. And you know, it pays off. Even ours, national. I don't know if I told you, but our show this week on on not on iTunes. On iTunes is with a full popularity bar. Uh, it was featured on What's Hot, but on YouTube. Uh, it got viral on YouTube. So, like I told you at the beginning, it reached those two or three thousand views. Uh, this morning, when I checked, was over at ten thousand. Because when they feature, it goes right. So it pays off. It it, it did take a while for that to happen. It doesn't happen every week, but when it does, it's pretty sweet. That's actually pretty exciting because that's one thing you know we were talking about earlier, where uh, YouTube knows that a business video won't be as popular as a, a cat video. Uh, but when when you reach that threshold that they have, and you don't you never really know how much that is, but it's like we've noticed it's about what did you say, Shahar? Was it three thousand views or something? Sometimes or, it happens with two thousand views. Yeah. So when that happens and they feature you, then you really get a boost. So that's what Shar was just saying. I mean, they we got featured, and now we're up to ten thousand views for that one single episode. You know, that's not talking the entire month. That's just talking this latest episode that we released this week. Which, which, pretty... which, by the way, we repurposed. We were we were doing a presentation in Denver. We recorded that presentation, and then again, my guy. Put the intro and the outro, and that's the show for this week. It was not done, and it became showing. a show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not difficult. It's pretty. It's pretty amazing because now we had access to these at least ten thousand people who now know about us, who maybe didn't even know we existed before. Without spending a penny, plus all the ones in iTunes and plus all the ones on TV. So think about that. So again, you you do the show. Send it to us. We syndicate. We syndicate in all these platforms. We put on our channel. We put on all the boxes. You have your blog there for the show. We provide the intro and the outro and the show badges. Okay. And for that, a very easy process, right, Nash? Here. So for that, you go to startmytvshow.com. Startmytvshow.com. Yes, like I said here, it's a tax deductible investment because you're doing this for your business. But I'll tell you right now why you look at the page, uh, the investment, because I know you're sweating, thinking you're going to spend thousands of dollars. It's actually very, very easy. 577 as the setup fee because, you, you know, we have to do all the setup. And then after 90 days, so three months, so you have three months to get that show ready. You don't have to have tomorrow. Okay, like I said, we are going to work with you 
uh, so so you uh, you have that rate. So you have three months for syndication. You're going to have a, a charge of 147. That's all. If you have a radio show today and you have your show on a Sunday morning, right? That you know you don't get a lot of listeners. You're paying at least 15 times more than this, and you're not reaching the amount of people you can reach with the show. Okay, I know that. I, I, I know some some local radios that they don't reach 3,000 people on a, on a Sunday. And you don't have the flexibility that you have here. Yeah. And you, it, let's say you have a show or whatever, and you're selling the ads, the, it, the the revenue or whatever. It's very different here. You have full control. You decide how you how how you're going to monetize your show, and everything is yours. So just to reiterate what Shahar said, five seventy seven for us to set up your show to get it syndicated, syndicated to get into the boxes basically, at, on, on, in the smart TVs to get it all ready to go. You have three months to set it all up in terms of to figure out how your show will be. And what we said, we're going to work with you there. We'll, we'll help you figure out what's the best approach for your show. How am I going to structure it? What is it going to be about? That type of thing. Those things we'll discuss together. You have three months for that. And then from that moment on, it's 147 a month basically for syndication to keep it going, to keep the momentum, to release it to the boxes on Roku, Samsung TV, and all those other places. Yes, and if you ever decide to quit, you just quit. I hope not, because like I said, this is the TV. Why of, would you? Yeah, it's the TV of the future. That's how it's going to be. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I would love to answer them. Now, naturally, in this system, uh, people that are on the phone, do you have any idea if they can ask questions or not? And while we check that, let me just reiterate that. Uh, start your show. Even if you decide not to join us, which I hope you do decide to join us, it's a fantastic thing to do, uh, and you, you should be doing one. Then go to Best Buy, buy a Roku box, put on your TV tonight, and take a look at the possibilities there for you. I mean, it's, it's really humongous. You're going to see that even if you're in a very popular kind of... Um, industry like your, your fitness or health, you have some channels and you have some good channels. Even TED Talks uh, has a channel only on health, but you don't, you, it's nothing compared with what you're facing online right now. Okay, so it is really a unique uh, opportunity that is not going to last forever. With us, same thing here. Like I told you at the beginning, we opened this program uh, a year and a half ago, and I have to tell you, and you, you can go and ask people, uh, they paid $2,000 for the setup fee, okay? So I'm offering you, and the reason I'm offering you this amazing price is because we are open on other channels on different industries and we want shows on those channels. So that's the reason behind the price today that is so affordable, okay? Uh, once we have people in, we are going to take care of them and have them uh, have their shows. So it's not going to be open uh, every single day for you to, to join. So you should take advantage of that. Like I said, we take care of the intro and the outro, the blog and everything. Now, don't forget, startmytvshow.com. Well, looks like we don't have any questions, and this is a, a, a new system for us, so I'm not sure we know how to answer questions through the phone, but I, that's what I had to say, Nash. Good, good. So I added the, the link to the chat box as well on the site. Uh, in case you'd like to click there and, and, and visit the page, but just in case, it's startmytvshow.com. Okay. And just before we go, let me just see if I told you the, the questions we get all the time. Time of the show, if you're reaching a multitude of platforms, like in this case, 20 minutes would be ideal. Okay, It works very well as a podcast because that's the normal commute in big cities. Uh, here I can cross the whole valley in 20 minutes. Um, it's also perfect for, for the couch, so right, for, for the traditional TV. So 20 minutes. Do, do not worry with a lot of production. Of course, you want your show to be nice, but do something that you can do for a long time. Uh, we had some cases here that, you know, the, the client decided to get a company to tape the shows and everything. And 
two things happen. First of all, every time she would go to, to tape an episode, she would spend three, four, five hours taping that one episode because the guys were very creative, lots of editing in the process. So it was a long process just to tape, which which is not very conducive with a busy, busy life. Second problem, it got very, very expensive, right? Because they were charging for production, they had a team and then all the editing. Uh, so she switched to her in her living room doing the show. I have to tell you that the audience increased after she changed. It was very good before, don't get me wrong. It was very, very nice, but she's getting more uh, traction right now. Okay. And you, you know, it was so interesting because the it's kind of counterintuitive. Meaning, she was she had in the beginning a super produced show, like it was very dynamic, lots of editing, etc. But once she changed to ultimately doing a little more low key, more herself, more intimate, she started getting um, more traction than before, mm -hmm. which I I thought was super interesting. Yes. So. Uh, Shahar, we do have a couple questions. I actually uh, didn't see the panel here, um, so I'm glad I you 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 stretched it out a bit, giving me a chance to dig around. So uh, we have uh, several people saying thank you. We'll be in touch. All that. I love Roku. We have uh, Corinne mentioned she has Roku and loves it. Nice. Um, one one thing that she also said is her business is very niched. It's, can someone who has a very niche show or a very niche business can they have a show yes well, there is no problem there what you have to think is the the size of the audience because we, unfortunately we are uh, we were educated uh, how do I say this wrongly right we expect to have millions of views and why because when you watch TV and they and the and the news like the news they do that all the time. They show you the viral videos. They say, oh, we got a million views, 10 million views, or whatever. And we think all the videos are like that, right? Um, well, with, with the smart TV, it's not like that at all. Because like I told you, on Christmas, they sold 5 million. So, you know, that's going to be spread across channels and shows. You're not going to get uh, millions of views. And if it's a very, very specific topic, okay, I'm going to say one just because uh, it's on my mind urinary incontinence that would be very very specific wouldn't it you're not going to get hundreds of thousands of people watching now i have to ask you does that matter if people that are watching are your ideal clients and they at some point will take action and consume your products and services that's not an issue at all uh of course in our type of channels um they they they, they are family friend friendly well, it's important and of course Roku d does not accept public uh, shows on porn and stuff that it's not very very legal right yeah but other than that if you like I said, I said you're training parrots on how to speak you will have an audience and th that audience might not have huge numbers but it's going to be your target audience that's one of the beauties of this it, ultimately because you can be specific you should because then the people who you who you are attracting are the people who want to hear you so you're basically sifting out any person who really would be just wasting your time otherwise because they're not uh, so much interested in your topic as those who are when they do watch you on the smart TV um, uh, one of the questions wait, wait, was wait a second, um, wait a second, wait a second. let me just tell you one thing we didn't we could have done that Nash we didn't get a list of weird shows out there but we were watching the other day um, Chinese TV right on food and then we watch how to speak Chinese because we couldn't understand what we were watching on the other channel so you have a multitude of topics there now like I told you they they had this time last year 700 channels and they get new channels every day uh, but a multitude of topics that you you wouldn't think of like our, our anime manga that Japanese drawing you have very specific channels for those um, it I wouldn't say that's a small audience online but I would assume it's a small audience on smart TV because you know that audience is mainly online so you have you have all types of topics go ahead Nash it's it, it is very interesting I mean we get even a little carried away like Shahar said we watch an entire cooking show in Chinese we don't speak the language nor do we cook yeah. so that's, <laughs> that's very interesting we were probably very bored that day I don't know 
<laughs> yeah, no kidding. Or, or they didn't um, have any new episodes of Prison Break or something. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So another question is, what's a continuing show? Basically, um, to, to the reason, the difference between just putting out a bunch of videos and actually having a show is ultimately you have it somewhat on a schedule. Basically, let's say if you decide it's going to be weekly, it's weekly, and you're going to release a new episode every week. That's the main difference. So you have to be consistent. That's the main thing. Just keep doing it weekly or biweekly or however you decide, but keep it consistent. Uh, we had, let's see. That is an amazing deal. You guys are the bomb. Totally agreed. Thank you, Chris. Um, uh, let's see, another question here that we've got. Can we get uh, a link to the recording? Uh, Shahar, what do you say about that? If the recording comes out okay, you can. It's always a mystery when I'm the one managing that part. But So at this moment, the answer is yes. yes. Just cross your fingers, make sure everything worked all right with the recording. Uh, and then, how does editing work for these shows? Uh, I was going just to talk about that. Good. So, just one take, or do you need any editing software? Do you suggest one? MJ O'Connor, remember her, Shahar? Oh, no, Michelle! Hey, yes, yep. yes, of course I remember her. I, I, well, I miss you, by the way. You should come back. Uh, Michelle, with the editing, you have to make some choices here. So, my personal preference is to send to my guy and he edits my show okay i did that for a while and i totally hate because you know there is a learning curve on the editing software whatever editing software you you use there is a learning curve it does take time and it uses the power of your computer so uh, depending on the computer you cannot do anything else while it's rendering it can, it can take forever so I don't like to edit I know how to edit I don't like I send to my guy and of course in the online training we are going to give you some options of places you can go to do the editing with that it's very inexpensive yes the other thing that is related to editing is the following if you do a one take show you only have the beginning and the end to add a sponsor or an advertiser okay if you do segments, so in hours, if I'm not wrong, we have three or four segments now. What can I do? I can insert advertisers and sponsors in all of them. Okay, so it, it impacts how much I can make with the show. For us, the show is becoming a very important part of our of our life. Uh, so we have big plans now for 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 uh, you know traveling and things. So we need spaces to put the people that will uh, make that. Uh, doable for us so that's another another thing that is related to editing uh, we have some people that do their own editing and it, it, it's okay it, the, the result is good but the problem is the inconsistency starts to set in because like I said it takes power from the computer it takes some time it's the kind of thing that if you don't have a problem you should outsource Okay. Totally, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Um, ultimately, you know, we, we have a saying here, we're the one-take boyayans. So when we tape our show, we try to do it in one take, yes. meaning if there's an um or an ah uh or something like that in the middle, it kind of stays. Yeah. But this way, we give it to our editor, and all he does is he basically slaps, I mean, he does a little bit more in our case, but he adds the intro, the outro, and then he'll add a few things here and there, but that's it, it's done. Mm -hmm. So that's my recommendation to you, like, do the one take, just get it out in one take, and then you just have to worry about putting that intro and the outro. You can do it yourself if, with if like you a don't like, movie maker. If you don't like much uh, of the te technology or you want to do your own, you do the one take. But remember, yeah. that will impact how much you can make with the show. So That's true. That is a very good point. Uh, because if you want to add sponsors, then it will require a little bit more um, editing. Yes. Or, yeah. But ultimately, you can. Uh, my suggestion is outsource that. You can do it very, very inexpensively. Uh, for dimes on a dollar, I promise, we'll show you how to do that. Yeah, it, it's not expensive whatsoever. And have another thing in mind. If you want to do every week, you, you have to give time also for whoever is going to edit to edit right so you have to think it needs to be simple the whole process needs to be simple and, and easy going there's one thing though that we have noticed doesn't work as well um, is when you use just a lot of pictures and your voice so it becomes almost like a slideshow okay you can do the, and there are several out there that follow that model but you 
it, it's harder to get traction. It's harder to get traction. So uh, people would rather see your face not well lit in your in your living room than a nice picture and your voice. Okay, so that's something. You that know, they, it doesn't mean you can't. Even us, we do use. Like uh, I think in the next episode we have an example of a, a, a advertisement that we want to talk about, and the picture will be showing for a while. Sometimes we don't have the footage of an animal that we want. We put a picture, but the show is not a slideshow. It has the face there, the faces there. Yeah, we've we've tested that before with the slideshows, and they don't get as much traction. You know, Shahara, Chris Barney just made a comment, and she said uh, basically what we're saying now is that people are definitely being drawn to the real lives, and they see people as real and not the perfect episode. You know, they want to be long and feel like they really could relate to what they are watching, and uh, and, and what the people on the show really get them. And so uh, that's that's exactly it. That's why we say it doesn't have to be super produced, because when it's super produced. Oftentimes, it's not the real you. Yeah. So you know, you know, we, we there is even a term called uh, Facebook depression, that people get really depressed because when they go to Facebook, it looks like everybody's life is so perfect, right? This, the new car I bought, or the fantastic food I, I cooked, or my fantastic kids, and all these things. And, and when you look at your own life, you say, well, it's not that perfect. You know, and we all go through that. I, for for one, we we do spend a lot of time working. I, I think that's our addiction. Uh, so I'm not out every day in a different mountain or something. And when I look some people that I, I follow on Facebook, I say, oh, it looks like you know they have the perfect lifestyle and I don't. Well, when you have your own show and you are yourself, they see that they are just like you. So actually, you create more report, more connection than the perfect you know expert out there. Uh, so if you make a boo-boo during the show or, you know, grammar, like I, I do, I make mistakes all the time when I speak, after, after all, it's not my, my first language, you know, it stays because that's how I am on the day-to-day -day life and you get to know the real Shahar and the real national. I think that works better. See, I could, I could make everything look so perfect, right? All it takes is a good editing and more takes, but I don't know. I mean... YouTube, that is a very difficult, difficult, difficult environment. We got 10,000 people watching up to this morning. So I think it's working. And, you know, by, by difficult, YouTube has a tough crowd. Mm -hmm. They tend to be a little bit more uh, vocal and um, negatively so. They call us <laughs> so, fat all the time. That's not fun. They call us, <laughs> yep, and they, they say that the, the, incoher the chick, the fat chick on the right is incoherent. So that usually, that's me. I'm the one on the right. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you know, uh, Shahar, really quickly, before I ask the, the, the next question, and folks, this, this is your chance. If you have any other questions, do ask them now. Um, go to startmytvshow.com. Don't forget, startmytvshow.com to get started. This is an amazing program. Uh, you'll get your show on TV, the TV of the future, the new TV, the connected TV, smart TV. Uh, so uh, it's a smart move. Go to startmytvshow.com. Um, Jeremy, I may need a little bit of your help here unless, uh, let's see if Shahar gets the question. He's asking, do you do concept consulting? Do you do what? Concept consult for the show. Yes, yes. You when you get this program, if if that's what you're asking, uh, yes, we are going to talk about that. And and actually, we do that with everybody because I'm not here. You know, you're not pitching. You are pitching to a TV channel, right? But you're not really pitching to a traditional TV channel. On a TV channel, you have to go pitch the idea usually in less than one sentence, and they say it's going to work for the audience or not. That that's not what we do here. We talk about your business and. And your end goals, what you're trying to, to not only communicate but sell, because you know most people that do work with us have a business behind them, uh, and then we come up. So it, it doesn't start with the show; it starts with what needs to happen, okay? And then because you can, you may say, "Oh, I, I want to, you know, motivate people." Yeah, but besides being motivated, what else do you need them to do? in order to be in business because I don't want you to get this program and try a show for three months and stop. I want you to be here for years, right? And for that to happen, you need to see results. And they are only going to happen if all the message is aligned. So yes, positioning is our forte and we are going to, to talk to you. And in case 
I'm not saying I'm going to do this, but in case it's necessary more than, than one meeting for that to, to come to fruition, we will figure a way to do that. Okay, but don't worry because it's not, I, I'm not worried if you have a cool idea for a show or not. I want a show that will work for both of us because I want you here for a long time and I want you to have an audience that follows you and think you're the icon in their industry. So, in, in other words, if at this moment you're like, man, I would really love to have a show on TV and I know that this is for me, go ahead, go to startmytvshow.com, sign up, right, so that you can get it started. We will, uh, together, we will figure out the structure of your show. So if you don't know what's it going to be like, what it is, or anything like that, we will, we'll do it together. So you'll know, you'll know what your show will be like, the structure, that type of thing. Yeah, and we are, we, we, we are going to discuss if you want to have sponsors or not. Some people don't, and they don't care about that. So those things, they need to be on top of our mind when we decided the format of the show as well. Um, now, there, there is something that you need to do. You will need uh, to be promoting your show as well. We do our share, but it's important for you also to tell people your show is it's on Smart TV and it's on iTunes and, you know, get, get some reviews because all those things, they count. They count towards getting sponsors. So if you have reviews on iTunes, if you have a lot of downloads on Smart TVs, if you have uh, comments on, on, you know, on YouTube, those count, and we are not going to do that for you. So you have to be promoting, okay? Uh, like we we have business cards now with our show on because that's our big big focus right now. So we want more and more people. Of course, you know, no matter what you do, you're going to get views on TV. That's normal. They find they they have the channel, a new show pops up, they watch that show. So you're going to get viewership. But it, it would be nice if you go the extra mile and promote that, so you. It's a shortcut. It happens faster. That's right. Startmytvshow.com. Yes. That's it, Nash. That's it, Shahar. No more questions. Let me just do a final check. Yep, we're good. Okay, so thank you, everybody, for being here today. I, I hope you got a good information. If you have, if you have no clue what this is about and you never saw a box, you know, go to Best Buy, take a look there, get yours. It's, it's in, you know, there are broker boxes, I think, that started at 30 some dollars. Get one, hook to your TV. Uh, we, we are going to leave this program uh, open for a few days. So you do have some time if you need to think, but, you know, this is the new thing. Not a crowded space. You should be here with us and, and not trying to do things that don't yield results like, like, so many of you are doing hopefully uh, you will stop that on, on the social media you're going to use all the social media now to promote this show and make this the focus because it can be very profitable to you with that said I hope to see you next time thank you very much for being here see you on the other end startmytvshow.com